I just saw you a little while ago. Hello, Coasty. So great, great to have you here. And some of my former students as well, Brianna, Camille, wonderful. And for those I haven't had a chance to meet yet, I'm delighted that you're here and that you're spending this time. This is a session that is for you and tailored for you. We don't have any set slides. We're going to be covering five four core questions, the five essential questions to help you think through launching your coaching business. And then any other questions that come to mind for you, we want to be here to answer those to make this as live, real time and valuable for you to take things away. I'm not going to say, give any guarantees that I'm going to have answers to all of the questions that you have. But what I can guarantee is that we will get answers for you. If there is something that we don't know in the moment, uh, we will get back to you with that. And then you can always reach out to us at uh, my first name, Susan at coachingoutofthebox.com or any, any of those that are on from the International Coaching Group and we'll be here to support you. So whether you think of something now during the, this live webinar or after, we'll still be here to answer your questions. Absolutely, thanks Susan. And maybe, um, so we also have some of the support staff, Lucy and Stephanie on the, on the call here. So maybe you can post on the chat our, uh, our emails so anybody can reach out to us uh, as well. Uh, but please do interrupt. You know, if you've got a question, just put it in the chat and we'll get to it right away. The idea is that this is, a, is interactive and as dynamic as possible. Like Susan said, this is for you. This is a time for you to understand about this, uh, how to grow your business. Um, so Susan, um, let me start by, you know, uh, first of all, I'm the president here at the International Coaching Group. I'm going to choose myself. Um, and I'm very passionate about coaching, as you know, about passionate about business. And, and this is about marrying those two things. You know, if, you know, you know as, you're, as you're becoming a coach, you're going through the whole process, that arduous process of getting certified, you know, dedicating all this time. And now it's like, what? What's next? Absolutely. And I've had a number of questions. As student coaches have gone through this program, they've asked what's next for them. They fall in love with coaching and they want to expand that either as a side hustle or even to pursue it as a full-time endeavor for themselves. And we want to take the guesswork out of that. And so we worked really hard behind the scenes to develop a course that really does take it step by step from the, everything you could pretty much think of in, in how to start a business and build the structure and the infrastructure that's there in a six week course. And so what we've done here is to distill into these five questions, some things that we think are really critical to that process of being prepared and thoughtful before you take that leap and jump into starting a business. Hmm. Yes, thank you. I'll share a little bit on what I see on my end, which is, um, I see two things. Well, these individuals that are coming in that are just becoming coaches and they want to their to practice. Or I see the other side of the coin, which is individuals who come from the corporate world that now want to either they're, they're either um, retiring or they simply just want to do something different. So they go through the process to becoming coaches, but they've never really uh, launched a business before because at the end of the day, this is a business. There is the coaching side, which is, you know, the magic. That's where the magic happens. But then there is the piece about actually marketing and running a business, right? Absolutely. And it can be difficult to know where to start or what to concentrate on. So what I'm really hoping is that this webinar will give you clarity in terms of what you need to move forward. And as I said before, you don't have to do this on your own. We're here to support you. Whether it was throughout the coaching program or if you're just coming into this now, uh, we will help you because it isn't, being, being a coach and learning the skills, the competencies to be a coach is one thing. To take that knowledge as a coach and then start a business is something else. And it requires more than just the coaching mindset. It requires an entrepreneurial mindset. And it really is focusing on some of the psychology of this. So in my work, not only as a coach, but as a registered psychotherapist, I married those two and also have uh, 24 years of financial corporate financial services background before um, the a solid decade uh, of my work as an external coach. So I'm able to marry those concepts and bring that, that to bear. And then we've got Pablo here, who's got a lot of uh, experience as well, uh, running different businesses and now with the 
in the, the international coaching group. So we, we have put a lot of time and dedication into this and we want to help set you up for success. Thank you. Yeah. And, and we'll get to the questions here in a second. I just want to add to that, Susan, and that is, you, you said a key word there, you know, you, as I think about, I put myself in the shoes of, of, of being a new coach. Um, and now I want to start my own practice. The biggest thing is, how do I, am I on my own on this? You know, it's, it's you know, where do I go? Um, where do I start? What's the right path? Uh, because in, you know, coming from business, there's a lot of mistakes that can happen that can be costly, not only in time, but in, 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 in money. So money expenses. So when you said that piece around, you're not alone, that hits something for me. And I'm, I'm happy, you know, I'd love to hear from anybody in the call. What does that feel like? What does that look like? Because... Being an entrepreneur can be a lot of times a lonely path. And I think what we're trying to say here is you're not alone on this. What do you think? What do you think, Susan? Yeah, I'd love to hear from, from others, right? Because it's it can feel like it is an, a, a, a alone experience in many ways because everyone's going to come at their experience of starting a coaching business from a different perspective. But this is an opportunity to really build a cohort and also have your very own accountability buddy, your own mentor coach, your business coach mm -hmm. as part of our, part of the program. Mm -hmm. So Gail is saying it feels comforting. For me, the big jump from free to fee. <laughs> That's well, great. Love That's that. love. That's great. Uh, that is fantastic. Yeah, so what, as we're talking here, and, and maybe Brianna and Camille, you can talk a little bit about that as well, and is that sense of community, right? Coming into communities, you know, not just being fully like, okay, I got to go do this on my own. And, and it's also competitive, you know, do I have to compete with everybody? How do I, uh, what's that piece around this course that gives you that sense of comfort or or um, or, or relief around, it's okay, the, the ocean's big enough for everyone, right? So I just, I wanted to say, I just finished the uh, ACC uh, credentialing process uh, right before uh, I took the course and I felt like it was really a perfect segue into the next phase. So I did the coaching out of the box level one certification and that was fantastic. Um, you know, I was able to get an ACC credential in six months. Um, and a lot of that happened because of the high quality instructors like Susan, um, but also to the, the fabulous people that I was in the cohort with. So the peer relationships were really a huge value add for me. So I have a long uh, career in the biotech tools industry, and I'm actually starting a second act career as a coach. And, you know, it's very, very different from, you know, working with equations and instrumentation and chemistries um, and pharmaceutical industry scientists. So I'm really doing something different, but I felt like the critical information that I needed to start a business was all in this course. It's very comprehensive. Um, you know, Susan really has the lived experience of setting up a business and she really speaks from a place of authenticity and accomplishment. Um, she also has the, the psychology background, which is, I think every bit as important as the business side in overcoming obstacles. So this is this is an amazing course, um, and I recommend it highly without reservations. Thank you, Camille. I'm feeling all the feels. I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm honored that you said that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say in speaking to Pablo's thoughts on kind of what it feels like, like for me, so I took the business builder um I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't taken the test yet. So I'm in like this vulnerable kind of place of, um, it can feel either a, like you don't know what you're doing. Like, how do I start this thing? And B, it can feel very heavy in like the uh, imposter syndrome. Like I have, like, even once I pass the test, I'm sure that will still be there a little bit. Um, so I really felt like this, this course really like, it really lives up to like coaching the coach. Like it really handholds you through all of those feelings and kind of can help you kind of reverse engineer what you're looking for. Cause I think as coaches, our heart is there and our mind is there. We want to, um, but we need kind of help organizing all of those vulnerable feelings so that we can move forward. Um, and then obviously being in a cohort with our peers is so, so helpful. 
And Susan is so just supportive and lovely. And this is just so much generous information. Like it's so generous. You're going to walk away with so much information that will eventually even support like your future clients um, and yourself. I, I just feel like it's invaluable really um, in getting through what can be very uncomfortable <laughs> at first. <laughs> Yeah, it, thank you so much, Brianna. And it's the idea that we are getting comfortable with the discomfort of not knowing. And as an entrepreneur, it's not so much around the problems, it's around thinking about things as obstacles to overcome. And that's where we can really employ the coaching mindset, right? We've got this coaching mindset of how do we deal with this? How are we thinking about it now? And how do we move beyond that? And knowing that we're gonna fail, fail forward, we're going to make mistakes along the way. But what we've really tried to do in designing this course is the years of tried and true experience of what things, to how to navigate around those core obstacles that most entrepreneurs that are starting out at coaching business face. So we tried to take all that guesswork out of it so that the other things that you might come up with, we we can address as a cohort as well. But in the course, we really deal with, you know, the, the major factors that come up as obstacles and, and, uh, and deal a big chunk of this course is all around the mindset and how to deal with imposter syndrome and those feelings of uncertainty that you mentioned, Brianna, because they're very real and they never completely go away. Never. But you certainly build confidence as, as you move through the process and through the course. Yeah. Thanks, Susan, and thanks, Brianna and Camille. This is great, great feedback. Um, and uh, and I know there's quite a few people watching, so I'd love to have some interaction from any questions that are coming up. Please post them, or just if you're on Zoom, just, just unmute yourself and, and, and ask away. We're here for you, end of the day. Uh, oh, we got Michelle. Um, hi, Michelle. Hello. How are you all? Hi, good. Um, hi, Carrie. Yeah. I go really, ahead. Go ahead, Michelle. Go yeah, ahead, Michelle. Yeah. I'm really intrigued by the conversation and comments about mindset because one of the things that I had noticed um, over, you know, kind of this journey was just thinking this about this notion of entrepreneurialism. And the story I'm telling myself is I'm not one. And it's so it's mm -hmm. fascinating. So that was the story from last summer, right? And then mm -hmm. thinking, oh, yeah, this is this needs to shift. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm just I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Thank you, Michelle. It's a great question. We have one entire module that is strictly on the mindset. So the psychology of moving from feeling like the coach to being a coach that's running a business mm -hmm. and what you may need to think about or shift in terms of how to approach this from a place of confidence when you're dealing with uncertainty around what this can look like, particularly if you haven't had a paying client. Like, so I really like that comment around from free to fee and where that, where some of those, you know, uh, doubts can come into play. So we cover a lot of this. And I think a big piece of this is recognizing that it's about, You've got to step into realizing that you can do it, but you have to do the work. And there is some discipline that's required in doing it and some time management. So we spend a lot of time on that. And when those two, when there's preparation and determination, we're going to see success as we identify goals. So we spend quite a bit of time working on those details. So it's a great question, Michelle. Thank you. Michelle. Yeah. And I also quickly appreciated how the course really helps you dial in what the eventual, like what you're really looking for, like what kind of schedule do you want? What kind of client do you want to have? Like, how do you want to work? If you have all of those things nailed down, then the path there is so much clearer because it's just a bright light right in front of you. So that's what I really, really appreciated about this course is it really helps you dial down what you as a coach and a human being with your life and your circumstances really wants um, and, and that can even include like just what your client looks like. So, um, it's, it's so, so helpful <laughs> to, to help with that aspect of where to get started. Couldn't have said it any better, Brianna. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Carrie, good to see you. Um, uh, you've got some questions. Yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm in this cohort because of you, Pablo. So thank you for 
uh, answering all my my questions. My my question really uh, pairs off on some of the comments already made, and that is, I'm in this timeline right now where um, I've kind of gone all in as a coach and public speaker. And so I can't wait until I finish this program and get credentialed before I officially launch. And yet I also know I'm walking that fine line of doing some things that might lead to some missteps based on information that I'm gonna get later on. And so, um, you know, specifically things like um, I, I've had some conversations on pricing and most people's temptation to undervalue themselves. Um, I saw one woman online was doing coaching sessions for $5 and everybody's like, what were you thinking? <laughs> and of course, that's a hobby. That's not a career. And if you guys can just speak to, um, I just started in the, what was it, Pablo? Was it January? Or February cohort. I mean, it was it was. Yeah, I've only had, yeah, yeah. Um, just a few sessions, so I'm very early on, and yet um, I I'm that guy who's kind of been in that lane um, where, hey, can can we have a cup of coffee? I want to pick your brain, or um, man, need your counsel, or can I just use you as a sounding board? So unofficially in the coaching lane, but making it more official while I'm early, officially early in the. Uh, in the process with the program. Carrie, thanks for your question and appreciate that you're here and sharing what you did. It's great, great to meet you. And I just also want to recognize, Dominique, your hand's been up for a while. We, we're going to get to you, I promise. So <laughs> we will. I, I, I just wanted to acknowledge. Uh, that's okay. I'm patient. <laughs> okay, thanks. And I would love to hear from either Camille or Brianna, any thoughts you had around pricing? Because you know this comes up in the course. If there's anything that you took as a takeaway and then I'll, I'll follow up from there. Um, well, so I have experience as a consultant and um, you know, I, I have struggled with undervaluing my myself as a consultant. And so I, I think it's really important to go for it and just state your value and believe in your value and see what sticks. And I think not, not being afraid to fail and not being afraid to make mistakes is really a critical mental hurdle for being successful. And this is no different. This kind of work is no different. I mean, I'm just in the infancy of getting my, my uh, coaching business started. Um, and I actually, the first client that approached me about paid work, I just told them, you know, my sort of top dollar fee and they didn't blink an eye and I ended up offering them a discount. It all worked out. But, you know, I think just put yourself out there and don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's my advice. Thanks, Carol. Yeah. Brianna, anything from your end, even just what you got out of the course? From yeah, I feel like the course had some really interesting um, tips on kind of reframing it like reframing it from this like arbitrary number that like we're thinking about per session and creating something different, you know, again, with that, like kind of reverse engineering of like, what do you actually need to make as a human being to live the life that you want? Like, what do you want out of life? Do you want two weeks off every like, do you know, do you want to go? Do you want to travel? Do you want to own your own home? Do you want like, you you have to decide for you and and then also again the business builder program will coach the coach through those feelings of i don't maybe deserve this rate so you're going to be your hand is going to be held while you reach for what you need for your life thank yeah, you so i don't know how else to say it. <laughs> that was perfect okay. thank you uh, it, it's great to get that insight, having been through the course yourself, rather than me just, uh, you know, saying it. But the reality is we do reverse engineer it because it's going to be different for each coach. Yes, we also will ask you to do more market research. We want you to do competitive intel. That is part of the preparation. And preparation creates opportunity, but it's also what you need for your lifestyle. Because when you become an entrepreneur, you are much more in the driver's seat for this and you can create as much success as you want. So finding that number and we actually t break it down into what you need to make per day or how many clients you need to see in a day or in a week or over the course of a month. 
so that you can keep your eye on that. And the financials are a critical piece of this com component because while coaching is a really rapidly growing field worth $2.85 billion worldwide, wide, it's still an area where the success rate is lower than we want it to see without having the structure and the discipline and the support, which is what we give you in this course. So we up your ability to be successful because you know how to prepare. You know what's ahead of you in terms of being able to, like I said, navigate around these obstacles. And pricing is one thing that people feel like, again, to your point, Carrie, you might come in under and not feeling good about it. And then if you're having some difficult situations, depending on who you're taking on as a client, if you haven't actually niched and really done the work to define who you want as your target client, then that can feel like a real mismatch. And so we really want to help you avoid that. Yeah, I want to also to just say that Susan's focus on some of the psychology is really helpful. I think that um, that's what's kind of a secret sauce with this course is, yes, there are the nuts and bolts of the business development, and she understands those things. But really digging into the psychology of imposter syndrome, and that's that's what's unique, I felt like, you know, um, about this course that's really powerful and transcendent. And so I think putting those things together and, and working with a cohort, not just trying to do this alone. Um, that's something for me to get my ACC credential was great about coaching out of the box. I had a, a cohort to work with and and that was, and, and the expert guidance of the instructors and the material, but putting all those things together is something that this course offers. And so you've got the business nuts and bolts, you've got the lived experience of Susan's practice and experience, and you've got the psychology piece and you have the cohort. So that's a lot. Um, to support you in your journey as a as a coach, a fledgling coach, which is I, I can say that for sure because I'm one. <laughs> you're doing Thanks. you're doing amazingly well. The other piece, and I'm wondering if Lucy, if you might be able to find this throughout the session and put it in the chat. And it is the free webinar that I did last uh, this time last year on imposter syndrome for the international. Mm -hmm. Group. So we have an entire free webinar and it gets into, again, the psychology of it. What is imposter syndrome? How do you know if, you, if you're dealing with it, to what degree you're dealing with it and how to overcome it, which is an important piece of this. So we also reference that webinar in this course as well. So that's always sort of top of mind as, as an issue that we deal with uh, as yeah. entrepreneurs. Yeah, great idea, Susan. Uh, Dominique, I know you had your hand up, so I want to make sure we get to you. So that's okay. We'll shift to you, Dominique. Um, so the mic is yours. Uh, thank you. No, I understand, you know, everyone's going to have questions here and stuff like that. So I'm quite understanding and patient. I'm mm -hmm. coming this from the perspective of someone who's a personal trainer and I've been self-employed since about 2007. So I understand some of the challenges that go into, you know, being self-employed, establishing your own business and things that are required that way. Um, and I know that when it comes to these things, you get as much out of it quite often as you put into it. But my experience with some of the coaching courses or business building courses in terms of training that I've dealt with is that, um, you know, they say certain things that they do. But when you get there, it's very much a cookie cutter approach, which is a little bit frustrating when you have unique ideas in terms of how you see your business going forward. And some things you can carry over and other things just don't fit. Right. Um, so I guess that's a bit, you know, I think it's like a two part question. You know, what are some of the, the things that are done to make sure that, you know, we can ensure that we're building the type of business that we aspire to build? Um, because there's certain things that are standard in terms of financials and things that you have to know. But I think it has to be a certain amount of flexibility that people can sort of build the type of business that they envision for themselves once they've defined what that is um, and not necessarily be, you know, a round peg forced into a square hole type of a thing, uh, which has been my experience at times with the training side. And so, you know, to sort of address that, which has partially been addressed already with some of the, the answers that you've already given. Um, and then also, you know, is there any data on like the success rate of like the people who have taken this course and have done the things and, you know, their success level in terms of establishing their own businesses? So lots. So I see that as three part question, Dominique, in terms okay. of what I've taken a number of these courses myself over the years so that I can do my own competitive intel and understand what's there because I've been helping 
I've been helping entrepreneurs, not just coaches, build businesses for the last decade. And so there we've had success. We've had a really proven track record in almost almost every industry, not just coaches. I have specialized, I'd say a niche now into working with coaches to start their coaching practice, whatever that is. This isn't something that is, and I'm going to, I'm going to have to call on uh, Brianna and Camille to speak for this as well, because they've been through the program, but it is not cookie cutter. It's asking you very reflective questions that allows you to define how this is going to be. There is a structure to it, but it's not like you have to do this and you have to do that. It's looking at it in six different aspects, core aspects of running a business and starting a business, both from a Canadian and a US perspective. And we give you give you resources in terms of what we call a vendor market too. So you can make choices that are right for you depending on the nature of your business. But it's not where if you don't do that, you have to take this step and that step, that's not how this course is structured at all, okay? And so I'm hoping that is getting at that, but I, I wanna hear from, I wanna, I'm gonna draw on, on uh, the coaches who have been through this program too to provide their comments. Thanks. Um, yeah, right on, um, Susan. That's it is, you know, I, I feel like I'm just getting started in some ways utilizing the material because there's so much of it. And it's, it is a lot of work actually to answer all the questions. I mean, it's kind of a coach approach to doing this is that it's really drawing from your own inspiration, your own ideas of how do you want to show up as a coach with, with, you know, backstory on these are specific things you need to do and a lot of information around that. But I do think it's very highly customizable at the same time. Thanks. Yeah, and I wanna speak to kind of, I think your underlying question of, I mean, to be totally honest, we live in a world where uh, uh, there's not a lot of integrity in business. So I understand someone's trepidation in paying for a, a course like this, if that's how they, um, if that's what they're used to. But I feel like uh, with Susan specifically, she would not stand behind something that she didn't believe in. And honestly, I feel like her course is like her life's work in six modules and it's so much there's like she said there, there's so many resources that you're going to take away um it it there's no way that she can even make enough money off of selling this business builder course for the amount of time and um wisdom behind it uh, so i do really feel like that piece of like whether it's worth the money or your time is it's no question for me. Like there's a lot of integrity with this course, 100%. And then in regards to your question about um, the cookie cutter piece, I really feel like this course, again, like really hones into what you want, what, you, what type of client you want, what type of life you want, all the things. So it is so far from being cookie cutter because it is all about you. Just like with our clients, we can kind of dig in with our coaches and find the deeper things. Um, this is that for us as coaches. So there, it, it brings out in you what you really want and what type of coach you are and all of the things and supports you in that. So it is not cookie cutter at all. And there is still those like practical things like, yeah your LinkedIn page and your, there are all those like logistics that are offered to you, um, but not cookie cutter, not at all. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Very helpful. Okay. Can I, can I just talk, I guess, from the perspective of international coaching group, and that, that's a great question, by the way. Um, and so I'll call a couple of questions. And so what I, what I, what I want to say on our end is that, we've been trying to come up with this course for years. I mean, it really has been a process for us because we're, our focus is always about has been about how do we get people coaching and practicing the skills and not just getting certified, but actually going out and becoming successful coaches. So this process has been years in the making and years in trying to find the right partnership with Sue, like in this case is Susan. And so we were very meticulous about what does it look like? How do we keep our reputation flowing throughout? Because at the end of the day, 
uh, it's all it's everybody's reputation. It's Susan's. It's us as a, as a company. And and how do we put in front of you as coaches the right program to really help you be successful? Um, so there's that piece um, that I wanted to share, um, Dominic, which I think is really important. It's a really good question. The other piece is about business and. and End of the day, we it's part of it, it. We do as coaches. We see that when we're coaching somebody as a client, what are we doing? We are helping them come up with their own solutions, with their own answers. They already know the answer, right? We're facilitating that process. And then, what are we doing? What is one of the steps? Is clearing the way. How do we get them? You know, how do we help them clear the way so that they are able to get through whatever is in the way of them? You know, designing their own practice, whatever that looks like. So that's two things that I want to throw out there. Thank you. Um, yeah. Is that good? Is that good, Dominic? Does that help? Yeah, that, that's helpful. Thank you. Uh, you addressed my, some of my concerns and questions because, like I said, I've done things like this on the training side. Some were good. Some were, you know, questionable. And Absolutely. Uh, I'm not into cookie cutter. Like, I understand there's, like, foundational pieces and business things that are good to know in certain practices. Um but when you have an idea of something, they're trying to steer you somewhere else. And that's not where you want to go. You know, like a coach trying to tell their client which way to go instead of the other way around. Um, you know, it's for me, it's problematic. So thank yeah. you. No, appreciate that. You know, to add to that, uh, Dominic, is we had somebody in, in I don't know if I'm calling up, but we had somebody who has who came to us saying, hey, you know, I already have experience in business. I know how to build businesses. Mm -hmm. And is this going to be good enough for me or not? And, you know, I was thinking about that. I'm like, well, even if you've built a business, or so for example, if I've you know, built multiple businesses or several businesses in my life, and the, we talked about this, Susan, when you were in town, uh, which is it doesn't matter. It's You can still have built a business, but who, that accountability piece gets you closer or makes you be, gets you to getting the pieces that you need faster, even if you've got all that experience under your belt. It really does. And, and for me, the biggest piece of this, and Brianna really touched on it, it's my life's work. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you everything that I know. I, I come from a place of abundance. I want you to have it. I want you to be successful. There's enough room for all of us mm -hmm. to change the lives for our, ourselves, change our lives for the better, but also those that we're coaching. And whatever area you're coaching and whatever you're specializing and you're niching in. And so all the tools I have, I always say it's open source. I want you to be successful and I want you to have access to everything that has helped me and help my other help every, any, any client that mm -hmm. I've ever coached to be successful. And it's all packed into this course. The workbook alone is over a hundred pages. Mm -hmm. I wanted to second that, Susan. What I like about this course is I don't feel like this course is a six-week course. This is a work of a lifetime course. So this course is going to be something that I go back and reference at different points in my career. And, you know, there's just all these, I don't know what the right word is, but, you know, entry points to huge topics that I think Susan introduces, you know, an enormous array of I mean, we're dealing with human beings as coaches, so that, there's a lot of complexity there. And I think that that's the value of this. I was really blown away and I've, I've done curriculum development as a scientist, uh, as a professor. So I have experience developing curriculum, but the, the magnitude of information that this co course points you to is again, some of the value add. I was really blown away when I saw the workbook. I'm just, I feel like I'm just getting started and touching all of the, all the deep aspects of the course. So I, I think it's a really big value <laughs> having gone through it. Um, it's really challenging. I think not to, not to scare you in any way, but that, you know, we're dealing with human beings and we're human beings and the, we're the most complex organisms on the planet. And, you know, I think it's really okay to take a deep dive into the complexity and provide a lot of information. And, and it's really up to us to, to figure out what that means for us. Thank you. We want to take some time, Pablo, to kind of go through those five questions. I know I'm conscious of of honoring everyone's time, and we've got about 23 minutes or so before. We, and I always like to wrap up a little bit uh, before the end of time so people can move into the next phase of their day. Absolutely, Susan. Okay. So, um, yeah. And uh, please go ahead. If there's more questions, just put them on the chat. We'll get to them. Okay. Right. Yes. So let's, I'll uh, hear the questions. 
<laughs> so even just from, and we've touched on a lot of, I think, aspects of it as you've been asking the questions, but I just want to make sure that uh, we are we are honoring what we said we were going to do in our time together today. And a lot of it really does come down to success happens when we're prepared. And this course gives you that preparation. And as having that entrepreneurial mindset means that you're going to have to really get in touch with, and this is where the psychology becomes into play, knowing your strengths, knowing when your ebbs and flows of your energy are, who you actually want to work with and identifying that. And that's where, again, this isn't cookie cutter. We're going to ask you questions that are quite not only reflective, but reflexive. So you're thinking ahead in terms of where you want to go. So it's really heads up around thinking strategically on where you want to do this. So we want you to be able to think through all aspects of this in the course before you take that big leap and are jumping into this so that you're going to have more confidence. We can't take away all the in, any insecurity or feeling that you might not be completely in a place of readiness, but we can certainly help you feel more more ready and that you you have identified a number of things that you needed to work through that you that won't blindside you and I think that's really important so you're going to need energy you're going to need determination you're going to need flexibility and persistence and that these are all aspects of having that entrepreneurial attitude and it comes down to even from week to week and there is homework in this course and as as Camille and Brianna said this this there's a lot of content here. And so what we want you to do is even to start to build the discipline around spending a couple hours a week of doing that, but it's taking small steps at a time and we work you through that. Okay. Identifying what the homework is going to be, having you thinking about this. So you are customizing it and tailoring it for how you want your business to look and feel and be going forward so that you can create that success for yourself. So when you take these small steps, it really leads to big strides toward reaching your goals. And so it's knowing that you've got to get comfortable with the realization too that you're going to make mistakes, as I said, and we, but you're going to be able to adapt and pivot, pivot much more confidently and having a cohort and having your business coach, your mentor coach there to support you along the way can be make a world of difference. So I think it's knowing then that you're going to be in a better place of readiness to take on the challenges of being an entrepreneur and using that coach approach and the coach mindset that you've learned along the way. And we we infuse all aspects of that coaching presence and coaching mindset throughout, throughout the program. So hopefully that covers uh, question number one. Okay, any, any questions around that? Makes sense, hopefully for everyone. All right, and so for the second one, what, uh, have I done or need to do to ensure that I have the proper skill set to attract my niche or target audience? And this is a big piece of what we cover in the course to really identify who do you want to work with and what you want to focus on so you can be present in the moment and having that awareness of where is my business at right now? What are the things that I need to work through? And I think this is um, also involves whether or not you've actually taken uh, a, a coach training program like ICG's Coaching Out of the Box, whether it's a 555 or you've taken something else or you are accredited. I heard, I think it was maybe Kelly who said, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to, you know, get my accreditation or some of you are in that place of getting there. You're already a coach in the program. The accreditation is that next step to help build your confidence in that. When you have some of these, depending on who you wanna work with, some clients are really gonna to want to make sure you have that accreditation and that ethical piece that will anchor you. Others might not. What we really instill in this course is a high focus on the ethical aspects of coaching properly and that your business is anchored in the ethics of running a business properly. We look at confidentiality. We look at how you store data. We look at what you put out as content as well, that you're not making promises that you can't honor as a coach so that you are congruent in terms of how you wanna show up. And so, uh, you know, we consider it, we can consider these things. And this then builds into the next question, which is the attributes or characteristics to define your ideal client avatar. So niching, 
making sure you know who you want to work with and how that connects to your core values and what's really important to you. We do a lot of that uh, value work at the, in the very first week of the course and thinking about the characteristics of your ideal client. So we'll look at questions like, if you could imagine your ideal client, you think about what's their age, their their gender, or how they want to be um, uh, how they want to be known. What do they do for a living? Even their income range, uh, range um, their 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 uh, interests. What might keep them up at night? Um, what are they afraid of? What frustrates them? What trends are going to affect them? What may be some of their built-in biases? Um, do they have like their own jargon that they use? Uh, do they, what, what do they read, right? Where do they spend their time? What shows are they watching? What does their average day look like? Things like that. Like what's something that is really important to them that they want? And the more you can dial into that, it helps you niche. And then it helps you do more of the research that you need to do so that your messaging, your energy, your focus, and your efforts are going to really be dialed into helping you be a successful entrepreneur. This is the work that, whether you're a coach or not, this is the work that a successful entrepreneur will undertake. And it needs to happen at the beginning of the process. So this is this is really, really key. And so what we do in this course is we ask you to really document, we give you the workbook, we ask you to answer these core questions so you can develop your ideal client avatar. And then you could just imagine yourself. So one of the examples that I shared with those and uh, with Brianna and, and Camille and, and uh, Pablo would know this, is just imagine that you were sitting down with your ideal client they had their worst possible day and they reach for some ice cream because they have had, they just want to soothe themselves. And you are sitting there on the kitchen floor next to the, the freezer, or the fridge with them. And you are digging into that ice cream with them because you're right in that space and you know exactly what's going on. And that when you speak to them, when you're connecting with them, they feel that you get them. And this is the work that we do. It's not cookie cutter. You've got to figure this out as part of the course. And any entrepreneur would need to do this. Yeah. If I just, uh, that's beautiful, beautiful analogy, Suzanne. And I think as you were saying that, <clears throat> what came up for me was that the importance of really identifying who you want to work with versus not. Because end of the day, what we it's 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 true. If you focus on, if you have clear that picture of what that is, then you kind of weed out the people you don't want to work with. And, uh, and that's something that as an entrepreneur in the beginning, it's it's difficult to find out what does that look like? What does my ideal client look like? And am I attracting the right people? Am I getting in front of the right people? Right. So yeah, thanks, Susan. We can't be all things to all people. We need to funnel. We need to bring this in and channel so that you can go deep in terms of targeting and knowing who you want to work with. And you're creating space to be able to do that. And that's Again, all of this is, is connected in the course. We don't have enough time to, to obviously dig into all of it now, but I can't stress how important that is. So niching and identifying the attributes of your and creating an ideal uh, client avatar is really, really important. And uh, so as we, as we look at this, what type of problems are you aiming to help your client solve? Well, I look at this in, in my work, particularly as an executive coach and uh, a business as business coach. I, you know, look at, at, I deal with situations where my clients might feel overwhelmed. They it might feel like they're struggling with time management. There's too much coming up um, in their day to be able to get through and prioritize. Uh, they might not feel, they might feel isolated. Like the air is very thin at the top, right? Who can they talk to? Who can they trust? Who will be honest with them? And then what is our role? So we're helping to identify questions like that. Or if they're, you know, in this kind of situation where you're starting a business, do they have the time and the resources? And that could be financial resources in this. And how do we problem solve around that? How do you grow? How do you scale? What are some of those things? So even as we're niching and we're identifying our ideal client, what are the problems you're trying to solve? So in this course, we really want you to think through those things before you leap in and have a really strong sense for what that looks like so that you can talk to the problems that are likely to come up for your client 
And they're not always going to be exactly the same, but you're going to have a pretty good sense so that you can do your research and come prepared as much as possible to work through that. And so those are some things that I think are really important. And then again, what sets you apart from other coaches that may be in the same or similar space? And this comes back to thinking about how you see yourself. In many cases, when we have, we might have some automatic thoughts that might not be helpful. In many cases, we're our own worst enemy. And so we can sabotage ourselves before we even get started. So I try to really nip, nip that in the bud in this course to be able to make sure we're paying attention to shifting from some of these negative thoughts to creating more positive habits and changing this. And so I use some techniques in cognitive behavior therapy and solution focused brief therapy. Uh, so I infuse that in this course and a little bit of neuroscience as well. And when we think about asking ourselves questions like, what, what have you done in your own career? What courses have you taken? Even this one, if you're doing it, or if you've gone through the fast track, you're already setting yourself apart. You already have a competitive advantage. What about your lived experience? What education you have or countries you visited or things that interest you? Um, your academic background, all of these different things can contribute to setting you apart. And it's really identifying some of those things and incorporating them into whether it's a cheat sheet you've got for yourself or part of your coaching bio that will help you reset when you have moments of doubt. And so knowing those things that are in, that are integral to you, who you are and your own coaching presence are going to help you stand out. And they're going to help you stand out when you come back to understanding who you're niching and then developing that ideal client avatar and the problems we solve. This next piece becomes much easier. So I'm going to pause there and just aware of the time we've got and check in for questions, comments, or feedback. Well, I just wanted to say, like, I feel like I'm so glad that you, the coaching out of the box and Susan are working together for this. I really feel like it's the missing piece um, after completing the fast track. Um, instead of like throwing us into the deep end, we get to like <laughs> work our way in there. Um, and it just, it's just like, it really is like the missing piece. I just feel like it's so great. I, I mean, and to be totally transparent, I'm already signed up to take the course again. Um, so, and I'm a busy person and I probably, I, I definitely would not, I'm very choosy about what I spend my time on. So I'm just, I'm glad that I get to deep, kind of do a deeper dive into all the content and resources um, and really take some like a second look at all of it in a deeper way. So I'm just really thankful. So thank you guys for, and Susan, all, all the love and effort you put into it. I just really appreciate it. So. Brianna, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks Brianna. That's a uh, beautiful words. And, and it really truly is, you know, for, for, for us or for me here at the international coaching group, it's uh it's a godsend to have Susan be a part of this. And, and, uh, and like I said, we've been years looking for some solution to support our students in our, in our student coaches. So, um, you know, we're very, very lucky. And, and this is a course that I know it's focused towards coaches and developing coaching, you know, but you can use this for anything. You can, these skills, you, if you decide later to do something different, the, the skills you learn as far as building a business are uh, applicable to pretty much anything, right, Susan? That's, that's I pretty... used all of these I've used for many other industries uh -huh. and help people move, in many cases, move from one, one career to a completely different career. And literally from an idea or not even being sure of an idea to bricks and mortar within nine months. And so it, it, these are... These are skills that are absolutely transferable, it, even if it wasn't for coaching. Now, this is, I would say, this course is very much tailored to coaches based on the questions that are there. But you can obviously pull some things out depending on what it, you know, what it would be. But 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I think it, it's, we, we hit all the high points for sure. Yeah. And one of the pieces that we haven't talked too much about is the nuts and bolts of, you know, so for example, marketing, a big piece of this is the marketing piece, which is a very, <clears throat> it's almost like an art these days. Or, you know, do you do market in social media? Do you do uh, um, uh, paid, paid ads in, uh, in Google? So there's so many options and all of that gets addressed and, 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 uh, and visited throughout the course. Uh, and we have all the resources as well on how to explore that area as well, right? So we do, even just thinking about LinkedIn, whether or not you need a website, what's critical, and if you are going to use social media platforms, how to approach it. Again, it's more around thinking through the mechanics of where you're going to spend your time, your energy, and your resources, and what's going to make sense for you, rather than saying, here's what you should do. It's not that. It's it's allowing you the choice based on where you're at and what your lifestyle's like. 100%. Emma. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm really enjoying the conversation um, this morning, afternoon now, I guess. Um, and it really strikes me, Susan, that what you're doing is helping us to create a, a blueprint of what our unique um, coaching practice would be and also supporting us to do so in the most efficient and effective way possible, which, you know, as we've been talking about, you know, um, here we are being coaches to help and support um, others in achieving their goals. And so to me, this just makes such good sense to have a supported partner to step through this, the next chapter. Um, and one of my curiosities, and I'm, I'm just so appreciating all that um, everybody is sharing about the benefits of the program. And sorry, we have a, a delivery that's arrived and my dog just adores our, uh, Sean, our delivery driver. Um, and um, I, I'd like to pick up on, and my curiosity is, does the program also, or the course also include, and Kerry mentioned this in, in his comment, um, around, you know, different pricing options versus you know, individual sessions versus, you know, multi-sessions and, and the advantages to that. Um, I'm seeing you nod. Okay, that's good. And and I, for the sake, sake of time, I'll just quickly throw my other question out there is, you know, we also want to make sure we're using, and you alluded to this, best use of our own time. So in my consulting practice, um, the administration is, is fairly easy. Um, however, I appreciate, you know, when you're working with coaching and you have multiple clients, um, there's uh, a whole different level of administration to to work through and navigate and is that something that is also covered in this course is how do you efficiently run like kind of the back end of your business as well? Yes, it is. We go through that just to say, what are the, what are some of the top resources that are out there for coaches? So that's why I Perfect. said it is tailored more toward coaching. I mean, but we could, you know, add in some other things depending if it were someone else, but yes, we, I'm really focused. I focused this very much on what do coaches need from the administration piece of this, whether it's looking at your scheduling or how you're keeping your note record keeping, mm -hmm. uh, how do you track, how do you actually create a contract? Yes. All of those details are covered yes. off. And um, like things like, and this is getting really granular, but like um, invoicing and, and things like that, embedding it with scheduling and, okay, excellent, thank you. Great questions, Emma, that's really good, thank you. Uh, well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Please go, Kerry. First of all, thank you. And anybody who's on the call still who is pondering taking the course, um, one thing I'll say right out the gate, probably the best uh, differentiation between coaching, consulting, teaching, um, all, all the other areas. And of course, coaching has become a ubiquitous term and it is such a broad definition. And I think as ICF uh, identifies it, it's much more narrow um, and uh, a lot more listening than telling. Um, so two questions. One, uh, I guess more specific to this webinar, um, kind of where I kicked it off, you know, is there any specific advice knowing um, a lot of the content that I need to launch is coming in a few months time? what to do. 
Um, or is there, I don't know if I'm asking for a cheat code, but maybe there are some online resources that are in line with what I'm going to learn. Um, just especially as it relates to pricing, packaging, that kind of thing. Um, and then the other part, since coaching as it's defined is, is rather narrow and separate from um, consulting, I do feel this tension with my experience and my content. And of course, the, the websites I've seen, people are advertising all of that. Um, and thus far in the program, it's like you don't lead with content. You really let the client be the expert and you're trying to create agency in them, not dependency. Um, and yet you do kind of need to have that offer on your website or somebody's going to, you know, why would somebody hire you? And so I can't put on there, we're going to have some real fruitful conversations and you're the champion and I'll just help facilitate that. It sounds a little too flowery probably for, for somebody to uh, struggle check. Gary, you raise a really important comment, particularly around the tension that exists in the coaching and consulting. And I'm both, I continue to do both. And I'm also a therapist. So I, I get a real sense for that. What we give you in this course, and we identify a number of coaching tools, coaching techniques, and you have access to that. You, Like I said, you, we give it to you. So if you need to introduce it, I always say I have this Mary Poppins carpet bag. So when you're working with the client, let's say they're feeling overwhelmed and they're struggling with some time management, you're going through it as part of the, uh, as part of this course, but you get access to the tools that you can then give to your clients. So it's very practical. And that's where it feels like a lot, but you can take what you've got. And that's to Camille's point, come back to it. You have those resources. They're there for you to use in your coaching practice. It's the stuff I use every day in my coaching business and I'm giving it to you. Yeah, and, and to that, you may, like, like you, you should have said that, Carrie, you may not be there yet but you will, you will have the act, you have the resources there available so that when you arrive at that point when you need them, the access is there. And I'm picking up this piece for you, Carrie, around the pricing, that that is a big one for you. So maybe it's something if you want to email me and we can kind of walk through that more specifically for you, because there is, it's more than I can give you in a couple minutes right now. And I want to do that justice for you. Okay. And if anyone else has got questions around that, happy to have a conversation with you. Okay, so I am aware of the time. We are now a minute past the uh, half half past. <clears throat> so we'll wait into an hour. So um, anything else you want to wrap up with here in the next 30 seconds or so? Otherwise, I really want to thank everybody for being here and uh, taking the time and, and the wonderful questions. Thank you so much, everyone, and especially Brianna and Camille. Thank you so much for your comments and Pablo for facilitating this and uh, the, the crew. So uh, Lucy, thank you. And Stephanie, thank you so much for all of your support and for all your questions for, for spending this this hour with us. So great to have you all here. Absolutely. And please, uh, the, the emails are on the chat here. And uh, we will, if you've got any other questions, please send them out to us and we're happy to support you. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thanks, Brianna. Thank you, Camille. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Susan.